for you. We want to serve you. We want to magnify you. We want to glorify you. And God, we want to thank you for all that you have done, all that you're going to do in our hearts and our lives, God. We thank you right now, loving Jesus. We thank you. We glorify you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. amen. Pray for those that are that are deployed, those that are gone to Europe and Poland. I received a message from one of the brethren that they made it there safely. They just left just recently, but they should be back soon. Amen. amen. I don't want to say a whole lot on online because of Operation OPSEC and stuff like that, but they should be back soon. Amen. And also this morning, I spoke to Duhai. He is over there in the Ukraine right now, and he's doing well. He even sent me a clip that he was on the Ukrainian news. So that's kind of cool. I, I don't know what they were saying, but there he was in Duhai on the, on the TV. So that's a real blessing. But pray for him. Pray for the various ones. And also pray for those that are gone today that are still in the area, that God will keep his hand upon them and bring them back safely at the point of time. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many love Jesus? Remember, service tonight at 6.30 p.m. Come praying, come believing, see what God has in store for us. And then on Tuesday night, right next door, Bible study, 7.30 Tuesday night. Amen? Amen. 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 And tomorrow night we'll have soul winning, outreach on soul winning at, at 6.30 tomorrow. And if you can come on, come help us out and continue our outreach program. Bible study on Tuesday, outreach on Wednesday, church on Thursday. Always something going on for the Lord. Amen? And there's something for all of us to do for the glory of God. Amen? Again, how many love Jesus? Yeah. Don't look so sad this morning. God is still alive. Yeah. Amen. And he is worthy to be praised. At this time, the brethren are going to come to help us to receive the Sunday morning tithe and the Sunday morning worship offering. We can give online at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks. There's a donation button there. Or on cash app, dollar sign NTCC Junction City. Or the good old-fashioned way, put it in a tithe envelope, pay your tithe, give to God, God will bless you. Amen? Amen. And today, today, let's receive a special offering. We need, there's about $400 worth of bills that we need to pay in the church. And so I think we can, we can raise, that, raise that in this service today. So maybe you look to God, ask God, give what you can. But maybe you can give a little bit more than what you normally give, whatever God wants you to do. Amen? We're not trying to hurt anybody. We're not trying to put anybody in a bind. But we do this thing together. Amen? Yeah. And if we all do our part, good things will happen for God. Amen? So do what you, you pray about it as we get ready to pray. You ask God, God, what, you, what do you want me to give? If you normally give a dollar, or maybe you give two dollars, or maybe today you can give five dollars. If you give fifteen dollars, maybe you can give twenty-five or whatever. Whatever God will let you do. Amen? Yeah. We spend our money what we want to spend it on anyhow, don't we? So let's not leave God out there in the cold, so to speak. Amen? So today, God bless you as you give unto him to meet the needs of the work of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Brother Ron, sir, please pray. Ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give unto you. We thank you, Lord, for each and every soul that you have brought out. We ask you, Lord, to bless the gift and the giver according to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, <coughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for your giving. May God bless you for it. Yes. They're not going to sing this morning for a special. Naomi's not here. Ruthie doesn't feel too well. She has a sore throat. And we could, I guess we could listen to Reverend Myers and Frankie sing, but we'll pass on it today. Amen. You got to work with what you have. Amen. 
So that means that you get out of church earlier today, right? Unless I make up for it in preaching. How does that sound? <laughs> Praise God. If you have your Bibles and would like to, I'm, we're going to read from the book of Daniel. We do welcome each and every one of you to the house of the Lord today. You know, there are sometimes that people go to church for two and three hours and think nothing of it. Right? But the preacher goes longer than 30 minutes, we begin to get fidgety. Are you still with me this morning? But you don't have a problem going to the movie, watching a movie for two hours that you pay $30 to go see with a popcorn and a soda pop. And Are you with me now? Oh. Preacher, stop. You're meddling. All right. Daniel chapter 5, verse 24. Then was a part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Eupharsin. This is the interpretation of the thing, Mene. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, now you understand that now the writing said, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Eupharsin. <coughs> Here it says Perez, that is really the plural of Eupharsin, just so you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And I'd like to preach to you this morning for just a little while on the title of a message, Weighed and Found Wanting. Weighed and Found Wanting. Reverend Palmer, sir, please stand and pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege to be in your house this morning to hear and to receive from you, O oh God. Continue, Lord, to have your way in the remembrance of the service, Lord. Touch each and every heart, Lord. Deal with us, O oh God. Help us to accomplish your will this morning. We ask you to be with Pastor as we minister unto your people. And we give you all the glory and praise. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Here in our Bible setting this morning, we have a very vivid picture of the judgment of Almighty God. Now, if you read earlier in this chapter, picture in your mind the course of events in this setting. Here was Belshazzar, the king, having a feast. And the Bible said that he made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. It was a big party. Imagine what it must have been like the very finest that money could buy, and no doubt it was very, very elaborate. Here was the king and a thousand very important people assembled at this great feast. As the party began to progress, Belshazzar commanded that the vessels that his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, he ordered them to be brought to the feast. He wanted these vessels, these cups, these goblets. And he wanted them so that the king, the princes, their wives, and his concubines might drink from them. It was sinful enough for such drinking to be going on. But to begin to utilize the sanctified vessels from the house of God in Jerusalem in such a drunken brawl was going too far. What was going on? They took the sacred and they made it profane. They took something of God and they utilized it for purposes that are not godly. In verse 4 of the chapter it said that they drank wine. They praised the gods of gold and of silver and brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Again, here's the deal. They took the very hallowed things of God and they made them profane. They made him profane. They utilized these items that were dedicated and consecrated to the worship and praise of God, and they utilized them to practice idolatry. Idolatry is still wrong. They were begin to worship these things of iron and wood and stone and silver. We are not to worship these things. We are to worship our God in spirit and in truth. God must be number one. 
And when we put anything in front of God, anything, whether it be job or money, cars, women, whatever the case may be, men, if you're a woman, I'm going to tell you right now, that is your idol. God is not pleased with idolatry. The Bible said that in the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand. The hour at the height of the feast, when the idols were being praised, and the sacred vessels of the true God, when they were being desecrated, God began to move on the scene. In other words, they were weighed and found wanting. You say, Pastor, what does that have to do with us today? Here we are in this service. Now, you just allow me to preach this morning. I pray that you will allow God to speak to your heart. Amen? We're here in this service. Many people are doing their own thing. Living their own life. Pursuing their own goals. With little or no consideration to God and his holy word. It's not wrong to have goals. It's not wrong to do things. But I'm telling you right now that God needs to be number one in our life. Amen? He tells us in the book of Matthew to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, all these things shall be added unto you. Oh, but no, nowadays uh, people pull out their calendar and say, well, I don't have time for God here. I don't have time for God over here. I don't have time for God for this. But you have time for everything else. Uh, it's time that we say, here's everything else. Let's put it off to the side and let's put God at the top of the agenda and say, all right, now I'm going to fill in everything else. God must be number one in our lives. Yeah. People don't like that, but it's a fact. Just like Belshazzar in our Bible setting. My exhortation to you this morning is to get right with God before your party comes to a crashing close. You live your life, you're young, <coughs> most of you. There's a couple old ones here, me and Ron, right? right. Nora raised her hand, I don't have to see you, just me and Ron. All right, Joe, you too. We're older than the trees. Well, maybe not that old. Well, how old are you, Pastor? Well, cut me in half and count the rings. <laughs> not really. Get right with God before your party ends. I'm going to tell you right now, it's very serious the way that we live. And it's time that we take God and his word seriously. This has been a prevailing thought in my mind all week long about how that people just kind of seemingly don't care about God. They have a disregard for the things of God. They have a disregard for his house and, and they don't really care. And they, they want to catch uh, the, the services online, which is a blessing. But I'm going to tell you right now that being online is great, but it does not take the place of in-person worship with Almighty God. Yeah. Someone said, well, what difference does it make? That shows they're missing the boat. I'd rather meet in person than online. Now, thank God for online for those that can't make it for legitimate reasons. But I believe some of this online stuff has made a lot of people lazy. Can I get a witness? There's something about the Bible said not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together. You know what? When the people of God come together, I want to be there. I want to be right there in the midst thereof because I need my blessing from my God. It's time that we take God and his word seriously. Christ gave us all that we may have eternal life. Do you, do, do you ever stop? And do you ever consider what God has done for us? That God loved you so much, you heard it time and time and time again, how that he sent his beloved son to die for us. He, Christ came and he went to the cross. He endured the shame and the reproach of the cross that we may have life. Does that not mean anything to you when you're making your plans and your decisions? When you are participating in the profane rather than the sacred, does it not mean anything that Christ came and was born of a virgin and he went to a cross and he died for you? Here's my challenge. Before you get ready to sin, 
And I really continue to believe that every one of us know what's right and what is wrong. I believe that. Before you get ready to forsake God, before you get ready to forsake the siblings of ourselves together, before you get ready to partake in those things that you know are not right, because you know deep down on the inside as the Spirit of God deals with your heart, I want you to stop, stop what you're doing, and I want you to begin to consider our God, our Christ hanging upon a cross for your sins uh, and the blood that was shed for us uh, that we may have eternal life, and stop and think about that, and if you can sincerely do that and continue on to your sin, there's something wrong with you because Christ came to set us free. And the Bible said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He set you free. He died upon that cross that we might be saved. And he did that because he loves us. You hear what I said? He did it because he loves you. My question then is, how do we show our love in return? The Bible says in Romans chapter 14 and verse 12. So that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Giving an account. There's going to come a time when I'm going to stand before God. And there's going to come a time when you're going to stand before God. You look to your left, you look to your right, your friends are not going to be able to help you. Your family will not be there to help you. You'll be standing there alone. Giving account to the creator of the universe. Go, oh, Pastor, help me! It'll be too late then. We want to help you now. Get to heaven, amen? Yeah. You're going to stand there. And God's going to say, I don't know exactly what he will say. Maybe you'll just say, well, well, what happened was, God knows what happened. You may be able to wheeze a lot of things in this life, but you cannot lie to God. And you know right now, between you and God, whether or not you're ready to go to heaven. The thing about it is God loves us, and God made a way for us to go to heaven right now. Amen? Just like Belshazzar in our Bible reading, the day of judgment is coming. Pastor, this is not a very, very rejoicing <coughs> message today. But you know what? When you work it out with God, then you can rejoice. Yes. My prayer is that, that God will speak to your heart today. The Spirit of God will speak to you. I don't like preaching judgment. I don't like preaching gloom and doom. But the thing about it is, what good is it to come and hear about all the good things of God if you're not going to participate in the good things of God? We want you to go to heaven. Jesus wants you to go to heaven. Right now. Right now, today. You are being weighed. Will you be found wanting? Will you be found lacking? You know, don't you? Don't we all know? We know, don't we? It's easy, easy to say, well, that one and this one and this one. What about you? You know what? Listen to me. It's time to evaluate your own life. It's easy to look at somebody else, isn't it? Paul Cesar knew that he should not have, that he, rather that he should have left the vessels of God alone. He knew that they should have stayed where they were at. But he did it anyway. We know the things that we should do and that we should not do, but many times we do it anyway, don't we? He knew that those vessels should be left alone. I really believe you know that you should be doing right. Otherwise, you would not be here this morning. There's still a glimmer of hope. But you continue on doing your own thing. You continue on doing your own thing. Tell you what, your own thing will take you in the wrong direction. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. I'm telling you, we know what is right. And I thought about it, and people are just so flippant in their attitude towards the things of God. 
It's like, whatever. That is a wrong attitude to have. I challenge you to really live for God. Well, Pastor, you can't live for God in the military. You, please do not insult my intelligence. Do not insult my God. I live for God in the military before you were born. Well, it's different now. All the more reason that you need God in your life. It doesn't seem to matter to some people to live wrong anymore. Well, I think, my opinion, let me tell you, my friends, it doesn't really matter what I think or what you think or my opinion is or what your opinion is. What matters is what thus saith the word of God. I'd rather preach something really happy this morning, but this is what God laid upon my heart. Amen? Amen. I'll just live wrong. It doesn't matter. People continue on in their lying. Lying is still a sin. Come on, can, can I get a witness? Amen. Lying's still a sin. Amen. Well, thank God I don't lie. All right, what about you continue on in your bad attitudes? Dun, 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 dun. Has anyone here ever had a bad attitude? Yes, All of us, right? They continue on in their indifference to the hollow things of God. We are talking about it yesterday, or not yesterday, the other day, I should say. These girls came to church one time in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I don't know why they came, but they sat back there and they were laughing during the service. And one of them really knew because she'd grown up around church and stuff. I think they just came to make fun. Such a wrong disposition to have in the hallowed things of God. And we come here enough and we just think, well, it's just another building. No, this is the house of the Lord. And we come into God's presence, and I want God to meet with us in every service. <clears throat> and I want God, excuse me, to walk in the aisles. I, I want God to bless you, but we have an indifferent attitude towards the house of God. If I make it, I make it. If I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. My friend, this is the wrong attitude to have. We have to make up in our mind that I am resolved to live for God. God, I need to go deeper in you each and every day. God, I surrender all to you. Amen. You know, it's amazing how that, that, uh, I understand things are expensive. But you know what? We go where we want to go. I understand gas is $4.09 a gallon. Right? I get that. Thank God it's not like some places. Where it's $7 a gallon. Amen? They're talking about it going to $10 a gallon like on the, on the uh, West Coast and stuff. California can have it. Washington State can have it. Not, not, I don't want it to be that way, but man, we complaining at four dollars. I talked to a guy on the phone the other day, and uh, he said that it's like six, almost seven dollars a gallon. And I was lamenting about four dollars a gallon. I know it's expensive. Well, because gas is expensive and because food is expensive and because this is expensive, I can't afford to give to God. I can't afford to be in the house of God. We go everywhere else. Bottom line is, we do what we want to do. I know this is straight, but this is what we need right now. People continue on in their spiritual lukewarmness. The reason why people are this way, they get into a state of spiritual lethargy. They have no zeal and no excitement for the things of God. But I remember the night that I gave my life to Jesus and God forgave me of my sins and Jesus set me free. I don't want to ever forget what my God has done for me. And the good news is that God is still able to do that in your life. What you need right now is a good jolt from the Spirit of God to wake you up out of your spiritual lukewarmness and say, God, I need something real in my heart and my life. I can get up here, I can preach, I can jump, I can do all these crazy things. But unless you allow God to be real, you're doing no good in your life. It's more than just coming to the service room and playing games. It's more than just coming and playing games. People want to come and play games, but they, they play games with God. I don't have anything against playing games. We have a good time with it, but there's more to it than that. 
Oh, you're quick to do that, but when it comes to pray, it's a different story. I like to have a good time like anybody else. People continue in in their rebellion to God and the rebellion to God's authority. We get to the point where we tell God what we want to do. But Pastor, are you going to stop soon? I'll stop when God wants us to stop, right? Well, I didn't have to come to church today to be made feel, to be felt to feel bad. I want you to feel good. The thing is, sometimes we we need a licking. God corrects those whom He loves. God has something to say about the way that you are living. Well, I don't like the authority of God. I don't like the authority that God gives pastors. I don't like the authority that the Bible has. Wait a minute. We still need to live by the word of God. God has something to say about the way that you conduct your life. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. Hey, not a problem. Don't go to heaven. It's like people say, well, I don't like people telling me what to do. I'm going to get away from home. I'm tired of what mom and dad has to say, so I'm going to join the army. <laughs> I mean, think about that. You know, it's time to get back to living right. It's time to get back to holiness. How can you come to service after service after service? <laughs> And still not allow Jesus to change your heart. We hear, whether it be myself or the two preachers preaching, who, or whoever it may be, we need to allow God's word to be real to us. How do we just kick against God? And we say no to God. And God has done all that he can do for you to be saved. <coughs> Belshazzar refused to humble himself in his heart. He got around his friends. Those thousand princes. And all those wives. Concubines. Started drinking and carrying on. The big man on the block. He wanted to show what he had. He refused to humble himself. He was proud. The same thing is true of some that are in service even now. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. You know, pride is a killer. The Bible said that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. I'll do what I want to do, preacher. You don't understand. Maybe I don't. But there is a God in heaven. The Bible tells us that God resists the proud. It's time that every one of us, that we need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. God is watching, and God is keeping a record, and we need to humble ourselves. Amen? It's time to stop the empty lip service to God. It's time to be real. God wants our worship to be real. There's some people who can't even worship God. Because it's not in your heart. But when God saves you and God delivers you and you fall in love with Jesus, it's easy to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen? Some cannot worship correctly because all that falls from their lips is contrary to God. You can come in the house of God and we want you to come. And you know I normally don't preach this way on a Sunday morning, but God knows exactly what we have need of. People's words are laced with bitterness and spite. We need to stop and we need to evaluate our relationship with God right now. Pastor, I'm young. I have time. I have days ahead of me. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Oh, we want to hear about love. Yes, God is love. We want to hear about mercy. Yes, our God is a merciful God. We want to hear about grace. Yes, thank God for grace because we are saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Thank God for his grace. But I'm going to tell you right now, thank God for love and grace and mercy. That's all that people want to major upon. But at the same time, our God is a God of judgment. It's time to get right with Jesus. 
I feel that some people, I'll even bring it on down closer. I believe and feel that some of you no longer or do not take the things of God seriously. Well, Pastor, how can you say that? Because the Bible says you'll know them by the fruits that they bear. Where's God? Belshazzar, he sent for the vessels. And he did not take God seriously. He made a mockery of God. I'll do what I want to do. I'm the king. Bring me the vessel. <laughs> you can almost see some guy in a drunken brawl. A drunken stupor. Bring me the vessels. And they, maybe they filled his goblet. Maybe he was shaking it around. Ha <laughs> ha! And maybe in his heart he said, I defy the God of Israel. Little did he know that judgment was coming. We live our life before God sometimes as a mockery to God. We don't take it seriously. You think I'm just some old guy up here ranting and raving. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, he said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. If you live a life in a constant state of mockery before the Lord, you need to beware. It's serious. How long are you going to squander away the mercy that God has shown you? So many times. Now, sometimes you can't win for losing. People come to church here, and I tell the brethren, go visit people. Go see them. Remember Myers went to go see a guy, and the man was upset because he went to his room, to his barracks, to see him. Sometimes you can't please people. One lady told me when I was pastoring in St. Louis, Missouri, she got upset at something. And during the Sunday school, she's grabbing her kids and snatching her kids away. She's, I'm leaving this church. I said, okay. And she said, and I don't want anyone to visit me either. Okay, no problem. So I told everybody, I said, don't go by and see her. Don't visit her. She doesn't want any visits. Well, eventually she came back. And she said, and you know, the whole time I was gone, nobody even came to visit me. I told a young man one time, I was pastoring at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And I said, I care more about your soul than you care about your own soul. And I believe that. We care for you. We love you. We want you to go to heaven. We want you to be blessed. And we call you. So I hate all these phone calls. Those preachers call me and you call me and you send me texts. You send me Snapchats. You send me all these things. And WhatsApp. It's not because we're trying to badger you. It's because we care for you. I'm not trying to harass you. We love you. And I would to God that, that you would get a hold of Jesus and allow God to be real in your life and understand the mercy that he's given to you and just embrace God. And, and I, when I got saved, I gave my life to God. Nobody had to call me. Nobody had to come by my room. As a matter of fact, the guy who gave me a ride, I would go to his room, be banging on his barracks door, say, come on, let's go. He, I'm still in the shower. I said, well, fine, I'm just going to walk. I'm not telling you to walk from Cadbury because that's a long way. Right? But what I'm saying is I was close enough. We had, we had church on base. And, and the thing about it is they didn't have to check on me. One man said, one man said that, that we, the church, abandoned him. Did you stop to think about all the times that we went by or Reverend Palmer, not me, but Reverend Palmer went by to get him and he wasn't there when he said he was going to come? Did you take in consideration all the time that that man called him and he didn't answer the phone? No, because, because we stopped calling him. What are you supposed to do after so long? Someone doesn't answer. But what, what's the difference? Why, couldn't he ha not, why could he not have called us? It's like felt family, relatives. You never write or never call. <laughs> it works both ways. Can I get a witness? 
And every here are family members that you never call, you never write. I don't think anybody writes anymore unless it's in a text message. TTYL. <laughs> LOL, whatever the thing is. But you see, it works both ways. If the man really wanted to come, he could have called us, hey, I'm trying to get a ride to church. Shouldn't have to call a Christian every week. Can I get a witness? This man told me one time, I said, you're going to be in the next service? He said, Pastor, look, you don't have to say that anymore to us. It was him and his friend. We'll be here. I said, okay. And guess what? They were. Where's your Christianity? You're quiet today. This is really straight, isn't it? How long? How long are you going to squander away the mercy that God shows us? Proverbs chapter 1. This is lengthy, but I want you to listen to this. Or follow on the screen if you want to. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 24 through 33. I'm going to read it slow. I want you to read it with me. You don't have to read it out loud, but follow along with me. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set up not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. Listen, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. The turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. <clears throat> Listen to this last verse. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Whosoever listens and hearkens unto God, he'll be all right, he'll dwell safely. You shall be quiet from all fear of evil. So what's the answer? The answer is, is that we need to hearken unto him. There's mercy that's extended to us right now, amen? But he said, I've called and you refused. He said, I will laugh at your calamity. I don't want God laughing at me. I want to listen to God. It's serious. He said, when your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when your distress and anguish, I'll call upon God then. I will not hear you. I'll seek for you, but you'll not find him. Because you're wasting the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. How many times do you have to hear that? It's time to be serious with God. God corrects us. God shows us the errors of our ways. And then he shows us a way out of the mess that we have made. Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter 3 and 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. We're hallelujah for that. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God in his love, God in his wisdom, God in his mercy has provided a way. And that way is Jesus. That way is Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the answer. And maybe today in this service you're doing all the things that are wrong and you're not doing the right thing and you're not hearkening unto the Lord. Well, there's good news. It's not all gloom and doom this morning. There is a way out. 
You see, you have to choose the way out. You have to choose it. You're being found wanting in the service right now. Weighed and found wanting. You're here. And you find things lacking in your life right now. Come to Christ. I'm going to ask you just a few moments to come to these altars. Some of you have never come to the altar. Today's a great day to go to the altar and talk to God. One person told me at a church, he said, altars? That's for dead things. So you're right. That's where we die to self. That's where we die to self. Come to Christ, he can forgive you. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, I can't confess your sins. And I'm not against you this morning, even though this has been very straight. And you already know I don't preach this way all the time. But this is what's been on my heart all week long. Wait and found wanting. How about your life right now? Come to the instruments, please. Wait and found wanting. Pastor, I, I've come up so short. The Bible said, for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. You can put up the title. We've all sinned, we've all done wrong. That's why we need to come to Jesus. That's why we need to come to God. And every one of us at times, we've done the things that are incorrect. That's why we need to go to Jesus. And God will forgive you. But what choice? Belshazzar had a choice. He had a choice. He made the wrong one. The Bible says, in that last verse that I read to you, in the Bible saying that that night ended his reign. He was destroyed. Will you be destroyed just like Belshazzar? Or will you hearken to God? Say, God, I'm sorry. God, I want Jesus in my life. I want the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin to be real to me. Your friends, your family may, may uh, forgive you, but you know what? That's all well and good. Go ahead and play. But what about God and forgiveness of the Lord? And I'm not trying to be critical. I want it to be real in your life. We care for you. We want to help you. I can't help someone that doesn't want to be helped. And we make a choice. God has made us free moral agents. And today the choice is ours. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord right now.